Good afternoon, good morning. This is Mark Johnson from Loyalty 360. Welcome you to another Thought Leadership and Loyalty series. In this video series, we speak with those at the forefront of customer channel and brand loyalty about technology, trends, and processes that are impacting customer loyalty and our brand's ability to drive unique engagement and experiences. Um, today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Carlos Dunlap. Carlos is a good friend of mine, I've known him for a number of years. He's a vice president of loyalty solutions at Claris Commerce. How are you, Carlos? I'm doing great, Mark. I'm doing real good. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here with you. Absolutely. Always great uh, speaking with you, catching up. Uh, looking forward to uh, hearing what you are seeing uh, in the industry. So uh, thanks again for the time. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little background on Claris Commerce and your role within Claris Commerce? Sure. Uh, well, Claris Commerce is a, a loyalty company that's that's dedicated uh, to providing premium loyalty programs. Uh, we only do premium loyalty programs and we only do them for retailers. Uh, we're focused pretty heavily uh, in, uh, in the retail sector, obviously. Uh, you know, and what we are seeing is that, you know, that premium loyalty is becoming a bigger and bigger deal um, to retailers with um, the advent of programs from like people like Lululemon and GameStop's re, uh, redesign program, Wayfair, CVS, you know, Restoration Hardware, and of course the granddaddy of them all, Amazon Prime. Um, so uh, that's our niche, so to speak, um, and um, we love what we do. And speaking of loving what we do, um, to your point, uh, Vice President Loyalty Solutions, basically that just means that I help uh, our clients um, design the right program to help them get to their goals, to help them uh, in the best way possible to drive loyalty and engagement and brand affinity uh, from their customer base. And, uh, and also work with existing clients as well, because part of our, our approach is, you know, we like to continually enhance programs. So I work with our existing clients to do marketplace scans, program enhancement recommendations, you know, strategic planning sessions, those kinds of things to help them continue to stay ahead of their competition. That's excellent. Can you talk a little bit about the biggest challenge or potentially the opportunity you're seeing right now uh, regarding customer loyalty, customer experience? And I think maybe tackle this in two parts. Maybe going back three months before COVID nineteen, and maybe <laughs> looking at it now, uh, one of this new new normal, this new uh, environment we find ourselves. I'd love to hear kind of what you're seeing in both of those, actually. Yeah. Um, well, first things first, man, is that the biggest challenge today is loyalty is hard. Getting someone to focus is hard. <laughs> Getting them to pay attention. Heck, for any of us that have kids or teenagers, I mean, just think of them as a consumer. To get their attention beyond 60 seconds, that's a difficult thing. So getting people's attention and, and getting them to, to focus on something is very difficult. Uh, getting them to be loyal um, beyond um, the norm is, is difficult. To get them to choose you over your competition uh, every time is difficult. And COVID now, with what's gone on and, and, and what's happening and what continues to happen and what we all wonder about what the new normal is going to be coming out of this. Um, you know, that's made things even more difficult, especially for retailers, especially for retailers that are non-essential retailers in a sense, non-essential as, you know, the, the new terms of the new definition has, has become uh, those who are luxury brand retailers, um, you know, are, are really struggling right now. Uh, and so, you know, there's there's uh, the loyalty uh, factor, the need to drive loyalty, drive you know engagement, retain customers, or even win customers back, is is more important than ever, and more Absolutely. difficult as well, obviously. Well, can you give us a, a kind of an overview of your your customer loyalty offering, your technology, and the consulting process? You know, a lot of people are familiar with uh, kind of the interest in premium loyalty programs. You know, subscription programs are really impactful. I would love to learn a little bit more about what you guys do and how you do it. Okay, sure. Um, so we classify ourselves as a kind of a hybrid loyalty company, um, meaning we offer technology as well as all the other services, program management um, services to to uh, operate a program, enhance a program, report on it. So our technology um, is pretty flexible. I mean, we do a lot of API integrations as well as, you know, still with some clients, they prefer to do batch fees or 
or secure transfers or whatever else. So we do that. We do whatever is in the best interest of our clients. Um, as far as the services, though, we offer everything from program design and strategy, which is kind of my niche, um, and then ongoing program management, implementation, uh, uh, reporting, analytics, creative services, customer service, um, and ongoing program and platform enhancement services. And I guess the, the thing that makes us unique about that is the fact that we don't charge for those services. We don't charge for the implementation effort. We don't charge for the ongoing program management effort. Um, if I were a brand, a, a retailer or any other brand, and I needed a loyalty program and the price tag was a million dollars to implement and then a million dollars a year to operate, I mean, do I have cash flow for that right now? I mean, I'm already suffering because of having to shut down or, or, or just the overall impact on the environment in the first half of the year. Second and a half of the year, I'm going to try to get back to normal as well as if I can recoup some cash that I lost. So do I really have a million dollars to invest? So I think our the approach that, that we go with is we'll build it on our dime. I mean, yeah, there might be some resource time that you'll have to put in client on your side because obviously we have to work with IT and a project manager and program manager or so on the client side. Um, but we will build it on our dime. We will run it on our dime. I mean, all with client consent on what we do and how we do it in collaboration. And um, and we make our money on a percentage of the member fees, on the subscription member fees that that member pays. And that way it's like a, you know, it's like, hey, we don't win. We don't make any money until this program is so appealing to consumers that they're willing to pay to be a part of it because it's a superior value proposition. Uh, that gets them something, gets them rewards and benefits immediately. Well, it's interesting. It's kind of a sidebar to that. And you know, we're going through our first industry report, talking to a lot of the providers out there. Your approach is very unique, very uh, avant-garde in, in some regards, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. disruptive. But I could argue, and others would argue as well, that you're truly vested in the success of that offering, right? So you're not putting millions of dollars up front. You're not paying for cards on files that are effective. You want to make sure that people are engaged with the program, right? right. You uh, have the pricing model is different, but if you're going to look at it uh, kind of objectively, it's truly vested in the success of that program, right? right? Because if they don't do well, if they don't grow the subscription base, if they don't have people who are engaged in the program, you don't make money. Right. That's exactly right. We, we won't make a dime. Uh, if, if, if people aren't enrolling in the program, they don't see value, they don't stick around, they don't engage, you know, um, yeah, it, it, um, it, yeah, it would be bad for us. But fortunately for us, we spent 20 years uh, figuring out the model, owning the model, uh, working with the financials, uh, doing the financial projections, the program design, understanding offers and, and, and communications and everything else to know how to talk to consumers, um, how to get them to enroll in the program, what, what does it take, what kind of offer to, you know, uh, incentive to enroll, and then what's the right level of benefits to get them to stay so that they see, hey, if, I, if I'm willing to pay this $10 a month fee or $99 a year fee, whatever the fee might be, and it varies by client, um, if I do this, can I see myself getting enough value out of this to make it worthwhile? Because the value propositions usually are 10% or greater. You know, usually in a traditional loyalty program, the value proposition is 1%. You know, spend a dollar, get a point. You know, a point is worth a penny and, you know, you get, you know, for, you know, for um, you get to a thousand points, spend a thousand dollars, you get $10 back. You know, you get $10 in rewards. I mean, that's a long time. That's a very long horizon and consumers aren't willing to wait that long for the most part anymore, unless they have to. So our, our, our thing is, hey, let's make it a, a basically a kick-ass value proposition that's really tough to say no to. And again, we, we do realize though, and I'm seriously smart, we do realize it's not for everyone. You know, it's not for every brand, it's not for every consumer. Right. Um, but we also know that there are certain people out there that want a better experience. They want better rewards, They better rewards. They want to get closer to the brand. Um, you know, they want, they want that that tie, that, that those insights into what's happening behind the scenes, whatever it might be. 
people want it. And, um, and if they want it and they're willing to pay for it, then the type of solution we offer is, is, is a winner. That's awesome. And one of the things we love to talk uh, with those uh, about in the market is uh, how they define things from a connotative, denotative perspective. Obviously, customer loyalty is evolving rapidly. It was evolving rapidly before COVID-19. And, and as you mentioned mm-hmm. before, it's going to be uh, very sanguine for brands to truly you know, get that impact and have effective programs. Uh, how do you and how does Claris Commerce define customer loyalty? The pre- in, in terms of premium loyalty? is that it's it's so good that consumers are willing to pay a price to be a part of it uh, because they get that superior value proposition. And for the brands, the brands get immediate uh, positive financial impact um, from that loyalty. And that's that's kind of how we look at it. That's awesome. Um, and has that, that, that definition been consistent over the last 18 months or do you see that definition evolving? It sounds like it's a pretty consistent and pretty steadfast uh, commitment to, to what that means. Yeah, it, it, it's consistent. It's certainly with the, uh, the value proposition that's, that's like so out there and superior for consumers that it's like a kind of a duh, yeah, why wouldn't I do this? But I think what we're, we're, we're evolving like everybody else, Mark. I mean, it's, we want to figure out ways to continually enhance the experience to drive um, uh, ease of, of uh, program participation. Uh, we want to help people save time, you know, time. And that's you know, even better than cash, time. Give me more time, you know. Um, you know, we want to take the friction out, you know, whatever, whatever that is. You know, we, you know, I know there's a lot of conversations about emotional loyalty and all those things. I mean, we... We continue to reach for reach higher and higher uh, to try to add more uh, and to deliver more for our clients. Because as you pointed out, it's it's in our best interest for our clients to be happy and for their customers to be happy. Yeah, especially with your, your revenue model approach, you have to have uh, great engagement, not only from the brand themselves, they have to be bought in because they want to see the success. But if there's not success in the program, having a million cars on file doesn't mean anything to you because it, it's not driving the, the re-engagement, the kind of the, the revenue that you need to be viable and kind of a, a growing entity. Excellent. Uh, and one of the things that we have, we have a growing brand community of hundred some brands. We meet uh, once, twice a week, met yesterday. Uh, last year, I think you read a top four study looking mm-hmm. at the challenges they have. And even before this personalization, cadence management, segmentation are kind of the big challenges, right? And mm-hmm. I think coming through COVID-19, we've seen a lot more of that. How do you manage maybe regions that, that don't, uh, you know, that have the ability to communicate if they're open or not open. So I think that's driven a whole nother list. And I think some of the flexibility you have is obviously appropriate for that. But when you look at personalization, segmentation, cadence, man, it's so important, right? Especially in your model. You know, how do you guys look at that? How are you driving that? How are you measuring that? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question because that that's a big thing. That's one of the top priorities on our roadmap right now is we currently do personalization and segmentation and offer management and everything else, but we know we can be better. You know, okay. we, we believe we can, we can find ways to make it even more personal, even, you know, more relevant to the program member uh, and, and drive higher open rates, click rates, you know, offer acceptance, all those things. And not because we want to, well, in some respects, yeah, we do want to drive more sales back for our clients, but we just want to be more meaningful, you know, <laughs> we want to matter. You know, we want the program to matter to the member. I mean, they're paying a fee to be a part of it. We want to make sure that they feel that this is a good benefit for them. Right. So with that said, um, you know, that whole personalization and relevant communications thing is, is, is huge. And I, don't, I think that's where a lot of brands fall down today. Um, the pressure's on us now coming, you know, in the environment that we're in now. Yeah, you really got to get it right because, you know, one, you got to try to win consumers back. And two, you got to try to hold on to them as best you can. Excellent. Um, we're in the process of doing, uh, I think, you know, a kind of a comprehensive study uh, on pricing and kind of customer loyalty offering in, in regard mm-hmm. to, you uh, know, also our first analyst report. You know, what do you guys think about kind of a, a pricing study and, and how would you like to partake? In, in, well, in- absolutely. <laughs> well, I think we, you know, there'll be everyone else in their pricing stuff and then we'll be kind of way over here somewhere. Um, but absolutely. We'd like to participate in it. 
Um, you know, one of the things that we are doing, though, is, is uh, again, a lot of it has to do with my background and everything else is, is I'm, I'm working hard on, on models and such to do a more, just to do a more apples to apples type comparison to traditional loyalty pricing in our model and, and just try to find ways to make it more easily understood for uh, brands that we're trying to approach because the first thing they think about is, wait, wait, this is too good to be true. Wait, this makes no sense. Wait, what's, what's the catch? You know, so um, absolutely, we'd like to be a part of it because we'd like to, in any way we can, to to share what we do and, and actually even maybe um, help influence how loyalty pricing uh, is done, you know, going forward. I think that's, I think the market needs that for sure. And I think we've seen that a lot, even going through COVID-19, right? A lot of brands want to make some change requests to the technology, right? Maybe they, they can't dedicate their dollars or their reward points to go towards their bill. Marketers mm -hmm. are opening that up, but the system doesn't support that, right? And there's, so you have huge change order fees, three, $400,000 over yes. in the call yesterday, just to implement a change order, which the provider is going to use no matter what at, at the next point, right? Their integration right. with a, a corporate, you know, a CSR, corporate social responsible brand or kind of a, a, a you know, charity offering. They're charging the, the brand tons of money for this integration where you know they're doing that same integration for three or four or five others potentially. Exactly. It's, it's a huge pain point right now for marketers. I mean, anyway, so we had a call yesterday and they were just, some were livid over the fact that they're getting charged for these integrations in this time you know, to be able to donate money to, to charity. So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. You know, you think about it, it it's, not the, it's not the brand's fault that changes on the back end are difficult, you know, or that the, the service provider has 12 different instances of their platform and none are the same. Therefore, there's no efficiency, of, you know, to make changes, you know, across all platforms at once or whatever else. So it's not the brand's fault, but yet they get charged for it. Right. You know, not to mention just not only charge for it, but they get charged at a profitable rate, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, for the service provider to do it. And they're kind of hamstrung in a sense, right? They it's either stay the same and 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 don't pay the fee or right. make the change you need to make to become better and more relevant to your customers. But it's going to cost you, uh, you know, a lot of money. So yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, th those are things, those project change requests, change orders, all those things, we don't charge for any of that. It's, you want to change, we're going to make the change for you. And many times we're going to recommend the change before you get around to it. Because again, it's in our mutual best interest to stay relevant and, and enhance. Excellent. Well, the last question we had today, uh, we call our CMO challenge question. Okay. Uh, if you could ask a competitor or a brand uh, one question about customer loyalty, uh, you know, competitor, a brand, a uh, service provider, anyone about customer loyalty, one question that's kind of top of mind for you, what would that question be? Wow. I kind of have two. So you had asked a question earlier. Well, because there's, there's the reality we're in today and then there's like somewhat the norm, right? So today it would be like, what can you do to, to help businesses not only survive, but thrive and, and get back to normal coming out of the environment that we're in today. You know, what, what, what can you, we, any of us do to make things better, to make things easier, to give people a break so that they figure out, so they can have a chance to recover? Because recovery is not certain for a lot of brands. But what I would also ask us all, and what I try to think about a lot of times, is especially when I'm talking to brands uh, is if you if you weren't tied to existing processes and constraints, what would you really do differently going forward? No, that's interesting. That's a, that's a unique uh, perspective for sure. Um, I think that's it. I think uh, it's 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 always great talking to you. Uh, been uh, known you for a number of years, and it, it's great to see what you guys are doing and. And uh, I think you're very well aligned with what you know. A lot, what a lot of marketers are looking for. They're looking for differentiating the program. They're looking for some uniqueness. And uh, and I think most brands coming out of, the, of this would rather have you know a thousand people that are amazingly loyal and kind of involved in a more uh, kind of tailored program, premium program, than having 
as we mentioned, a million people that may or may not be engaged, right? The messages may not write. So I think you guys are doing some cool stuff and it was great to hear and talk to you and I look forward to talking to you again uh, later this year. Absolutely, Mark, it's been my pleasure, man. You're awesome, thank you. Thank your organization for what they do. Uh, thanks for this time today and I look forward to catching up with you soon.